Welcome back. This is the second video in a series designed to help you learn how to create UML data models using Visio. In this video, I'll show you how you can add classes to your diagram, and when you add the classes, you'll be able to specify not only the class name, but the stereotype for the class and the attributes associated with that. Let me switch to showing you the Visio screen. And here is the screen. I find that having the uh, the page itself so small makes it very difficult to read what I'm entering on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is to change the zoom so that it the page width is shown. Now that I've got a larger uh, screen to work with, in order to add classes to my diagram, all I need to do is to go to the UML static structure area. And if this area isn't easy to see, sometimes you have to move uh, the model explorer up or down by just putting your cursor over the line between it. That will allow you to see all of the types of structures that are available for your figure. We're going to add a class to our diagram and it, it defaults to just being named class 1. However, when I double click on the class, I'm able to specify all of the parameters. So to continue the hospital example that we've been working with, I'm going to create a class called operating room. The naming standard for classes is that they all begin with uppercase letters and when you have multiple words in the class name then you begin each additional word also with an uppercase letter. Because in the first video in this series we created new stereotypes, I can now come in and enter stereotypes for this class. The operating room is a resource for our organization and if I just type R it pulls to the first R in the class options, in the stereotype options for classes, and I see resource. If I press enter, whoops, resource, if I press tab, then I'll be able to save that resource. Additionally, while I have the class window open, the class properties window, I can also enter attributes. Each class needs to have a unique identifier, and so in this organization, there's a field called OR number, which is the attribute number, which will be the unique identifier. Additionally, there could be other attributes that provide more information about the operating room. For example, there could be an attribute that's called last inspection date, and I would want to collect that to know that we're meeting all of the health standards and the codes that we're required to meet. If I were going to be use the, using this document for um, input into a programming or a program designing phase, I would also specify the data types. Are these numeric data types? Are they Boolean types? Given that I'm just using this to understand the reality, I'm going to leave those types and all of the other additional values as they are. When I click OK, you'll see that the class uh, figure itself has been changed to show now there's a stereotype in the brackets, resource. There's the class name itself, operating room. And in the middle panel for the class figure, it shows the OR number and the last inspection date as the attributes. Now the default is actually that the stereotype should be displayed above the operating room. And I'm not quite sure why, but if I come back in, look at the figure itself and press enter, that standard format will be displayed. And so here you see now the resource above operating room and the attributes in between. To add additional classes, I follow the same procedures. I can come over and say, I've got a class for the operation. That is an example of an economic event. And the attributes for the operation include operation number, date, time, and I could have various other attributes associated with the operation itself. When I click OK, again it comes up, shows both of them on two different lines, and now I get them on one line. I, I do find that if I were to copy this class and then just type over the name, the attributes, and the stereotype, that it would come displayed as we would normally expect it without any problem. This concludes the video on how to add classes to your UML diagram. In the final video, we'll add the associations between those classes, including their multiplicities.